All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is JH. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's just straight into it. Did that video earlier. Video in regards to uh, what's going on with the union. I told y'all to make sure you sign up, right? Thought it was an inspirational message. So somebody just jumped in. Said, do you understand what the National Convention for is for letter carriers? At the convention, we discuss what we want out of our contract. I really don't like union bashing. You've been going in this video and Miami carrier video. Please do better. Peace and God bless. That was, that was it. That was it. So with all due respect, ain't no such thing as a feeling police. It's number one. Number two, it's my God given right to have a freedom of speech and a freedom of thought. Just because you're part of a union doesn't make you better than anybody else. It's the problem. I'm going to say what I want, when I want. I call a spade a spade. I don't just talk about unions, you see. When management screws up, I talk about management. Right? When I talk about the unions when they screw up. Right? Right. When I talk about my own co-workers when they screw up. Right? Right. When I screw up, I talk about myself. Right? Right. Can't silence me. There's no such thing as a feelings police either. It's just because you're in your feelings. Because of what I said. If it bothers you, then it applies to you. Please do better. Well, here it is. Let me go through and dissect your words. Be careful what you say. Because regardless of what I look like, I'm not your average Joe. If the National Convention, they discuss what they want out of their contract, let's talk. We're in April. The contract expired last year. Is this the first national convention? No, it ain't. When do they start discussions in regards to a contract? Let's talk about a year before the contract expires. So technically, there's been two, right? Two conventions prior to. Two years that you discuss what you want out of the contract. But there ain't been no transparency. Nobody knows a word. Two years later, tell me what I could talk about. I wouldn't be talking about this if there was transparency. You see, it's nonsensical to say, we're going to go to this convention and we're going to discuss it. You're going to discuss it a year later? After the contract expired last year? Come on now. Let's keep it 100. Now you want to discuss something? No, no, no. Y'all been discussing this for two years now. You expect you to say that and I'm going to just stay silent? Yeah, I'm going to talk about the people when they screw up. I'm going to talk about the people that are supposed to represent and they ain't doing their job. You know why? Because it's my God-given right. It's my opinion. Freedom of speech. And when I make a mistake, I apologize. But there's no mistake here. This is not Jay just saying it. It's 200 thousand carriers across this country that have no idea what's going on. And you say you're going to the convention, great. How many of that 200,000 of your carriers are going to be there at your convention with you? Do they know what you're going to discuss when they go to the convention? Being that you decided to write this and you're going, please do tell me what you're going to discuss when you're there. Tell us what I haven't already told them. Tell us what you bring into the table. Because I'm being nosy. Matter of fact, tell the people in your office what you're bringing to the table. See, this isn't a loud mouth. This is the mouth, the voice of the voiceless. You don't like what I have to say. Shut me up. Just do what you're supposed to do two years ago. See, I had a discussion with my own shop steward. And I said, man, is this normal? And he said, actually, it is. They go into discussion a year before, and then they have this issue. That's how you guys get back. But I said, oh, okay. 
So why are they not bringing things forward? And he said, you know what? This year they're doing something different. I said, man, I appreciate that. And that's how a conversation happens. Can somebody walk up to you and have a conversation? Tell us what you're discussing. Even though you're not my craft. Tell the people in the comment section what you're discussing because they want to know. Instead of being in your feelings. No feelings, police. There's never been a time when somebody has actually sat up here and said everything. See, I'm just a truck driver. At the end of the day, I'm still going to be around. If I'm not here, I'll always have something. Carriers base their life off of what you guys are going to do. Do something. Anything. Just anything. Post something. Because your website is crickets. It has no relevance to the lives of the people that are paying their dues today. None. Don't like union bashing. bashing. I don't like Brussels sprouts. I just don't eat them. See how that works? Cut it. When it comes to lifting boxes, loading pallets, or even picking and sorting items, no question, robots can do this better and faster than humans with no risk of injury. A recent report found 37% of workers surveyed are worried about automation putting jobs at risk, but 73% think technology can never replace the human mind. Nearly three quarters say they're ready to learn new skills or retrain to remain employable. Wow. So this is your new office? Yes, ma'am. This is ma'am. My office, welcome aboard. Consider Jackie Burton one of them. Holy cow, so you're attached to a 53-foot trailer back there? Yes, ma'am. A year ago, she was an order filler at Walmart, picking groceries for deliveries. But as the company automated her job, she pivoted, enrolling in Walmart's Associate to Driver program. After 18 weeks of training, she became a certified Walmart private fleet driver and now makes six figures a year. Is that a lot more than you were making? It is. I'm definitely in a better position for setting up my future. It is the next great industrial revolution. Chance Bayless used to work as an unloader for Walmart. This used to be where you worked when you came in every day. Correct. Inside of trailers like this, loading and unloading pallets. That's right, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. But two years ago, his manager suggested he enroll in a two-month automation training program. The upskilling allowed him to trade in his manual labor job to be an automation equipment operator, making up to $27 an hour. The role puts him on a path to manager roles with annual salaries of $60,000. Now his day involves monitoring these two robots as they build pallets of Walmart goods. He intervenes when the bots get confused by simple things like a box falling on its side or when the computers detect a problem. We're using our minds to solve problems instead of our bodies. And that's the great thing about automation. You're, you're being engaged on a mental level. What would be your advice to someone who's in a situation where automation is coming to their workplace? Anyone can do this because it's all about training and it's all about your ability to dedicate yourself to anything. It's not just a job anymore, it's now a career. Building those careers, also the focus at Amazon. By 2025, the company will invest $1.2 billion to help more than 300,000 U.S. employees get into higher paying careers through upskilling with free education and training. We want to invest in everyone. Ofori Egboka is Amazon's vice president of people for global operations. What would you say to someone, an employee who's like, there's so much happening, where would you tell them to start? I'd say get excited about it. Ask your supervisor, ask your leader, ask HR. These opportunities are going to continue to grow, and we've proven it. We've created hundreds of jobs in the, in the area of, of robotics. Since launching its Mechatronics and Robotics Apprenticeship in 2020, a free 18-month program, more than 1,700 graduates now work in tech-focused roles, with many seeing pay increases of 40%. Their newest initiative is AI Ready. It's open to the public. You don't have to be an Amazon employee. The program provides free AI skills training globally. We want to invest in everyone. Our goal as Amazon is we want to empower anyone who's interested in exploring a technical career. And we want to make access easy and accessible and affordable to people. 
And that really is the key to all of this, access to skills training for these jobs. We know Walmart and Amazon have laid off tens of thousands of workers last year because of a combination of automation and cost cutting. But they say many new jobs are also being created, as we just saw. So then what's the best way for someone to learn about these programs, especially we were talking about some of this work is so hard on the body yeah. that maybe they can see a light at the end of the tunnel here. The key really is to talk to your supervisor yeah. and also set up a meeting with the human resources department and ask questions and also seek out the people who are doing those jobs that you might want to do and ask them questions about how they got there. I think a lot of people are surprised to learn employers have in-house programs. You just have to inquire about them and it can be life changing. It can change your salary. It certainly can change your health outlook look too. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.